just going to have a chin wag about your upcoming tour to Australia. There's also, I believe, a single dropping later on this week, which of course will be a precursor to an album. So it's an incredibly busy time for you at this point, isn't it, Alex? Yeah, well, uh, the I, I wouldn't get too far ahead of, of <laughs> about the album part. Uh, right now, it's just the single that we're kind of we've released two other singles. Yeah. Uh, but we haven't fully commit. We haven't fully like announced an album or anything yet with that. With that. I was actually looking for that when I was, <clears throat> so I was doing my research. I mean, obviously, more like a crash and got me all wrong as it came out in the previous couple of months. And I was going, is there an album? I'm guessing there'd be an mm -hmm. album. At the same time, I'm also well aware that you guys are, in essence, on a new label or, or certainly a new um, a distribution in that aspect. So is that why there's a different concept to not just dropping an album? Yeah, so yeah, this is all self 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 release. Um, we hired a different distro and everything, and yeah, we're kind of just doing it on our own. And yeah, I mean, it's really just uh, just releasing. So far, we've been trying to release singles and um, you know, kind of see how that goes and keep the, keep our options open. I mean, you know, definitely not excluding the the possibility that we'll package everything in the future but you know we're still kind of kind of playing that out you know planning that out and playing with it and yeah seeing how that goes is i mean is that a kind of a um has that been thought when i say it's been thought out in the sense of there's a like content seems to be king now where it's like as long as you're dropping something every say two months you're you're in the eye rather than an album gets dropped and then kind of dissipates over the course of next month or two. Is that part of that thinking? I, I mean, yeah, you couldn't have said it better, or I couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, really, like that's that's really the um, the whole thing is that you know we noticed it in the past is you know when we release albums, <clears throat> we'll spend you know a year probably writing the songs, recording the songs, getting together a marketing plan, filming videos, you know, getting artwork together for the singles and really p investing so much time and kind of being silent for a year or so or a year and a half. <clears throat> and then, um, you know, we're all excited about this record. We release it and then uh, it's it gets traction and buzz for about two weeks and then yeah, and then that's it. <laughs> and, you know, then we got, then we're, you know, we're in the middle of a, we start doing a cycle, like a touring cycle based on that. And so we have like, you know, our traditional kind of cycle will last like two years, two and a half years or so mm -hmm. uh, all around, all around this. And you're, you're so right to point out that it's really now, you know, like content is king. It, it, uh, there, there's an appetite, a constant appetite for new, new new things whether it be new music or, or TikTok videos or some sort of like promotion something going on you know there's always an avenue for for you know buzz and to gain kind of attention uh so yeah so we're you know that that's kind of part of the thinking is like all right well if that if we're in a completely different landscape or if that's the landscape now of this of you know the marketing world and and being in a band then let's let's try this out let's see how it works with us just kind of releasing independent songs or, or songs you know like standalone singles or 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 maybe that we'll package them you know in, in an ep or maybe they'll be part of an album uh but yeah we, we just kind of wanted to to start on that path and just see just kind of experiment and see how 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 it works yeah so when Miracle drops on the 13th, which is Friday, it was Friday everywhere. I don't know why, I think it's just Friday here. <laughs> and so when it drops on the 13th, um, what can you, um, what can fans expect from Miracle? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, I, I don't think it's anything like, you know, too far away from what we've done in the past. It's more like a ballad. Um, it's more uh like more thoughtful you know like uh more like a crash and 
was certainly more energetic and more um, kind of more in line with like our, our energetic sad songs, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, Got Me All Wrong was kind of more of like a, you know, anthemic rock song, I guess, you know, all, all this with the caveat that it's all like Mayday Parade style, you know, through the lens of Mayday Parade. Uh, Miracle is is just a more of a ballad and <clears throat> more of like a slower, slower kind of thing. Um, yeah. Okay. So thanks. So moving uh, from that, so obviously that goes and drops on Friday. Uh, in November or early November, you arrive over here in Australia uh, with All Time Low and Lauren Hibbard. You were actually in Australia last year. It was, I think it was May last year, April, May. I'm, mm -hmm. I remember that. Um, so, I mean, what makes you, what make, like, because a lot of bands won't come go out of their way to come to Australia. So, what makes Australia so appealing to you guys that you do turn up so often? Well, uh, you know, the fan base is great. Um, traditionally, we've done, you know, we've done pretty good business there. Um, we enjoy going there. You know, it's, it's you know, the, we're always welcomed and the city, you know, it's a fun place to go. And uh, But, you know, I think the significant thing here was that All Time Low invited us and mm. asked us to be part of their tour. <clears throat> and, you know, usually like we'll, you know, we'll either do headliners in Australia or we'll, or we'll uh, do um, festival show, festivals like Good Things or Soundwave whenever it was around. Yes, I've seen that. Uh, yeah, so, um, so, you know, I don't think we've ever supported, done a support, or no, no, that's not true. We did, we supported Yellow Card like a decade ago there. Um, so, this, you know, this is just a great opportunity, it really. I mean, it was like a opportunity for us that, that we, you know, seldom get. We don't, you know, up until this year, we haven't gotten many support offers like anywhere, not just in, you know, overseas in Australia or the UK or, or wherever, but also in the US. So we've been really lucky this year with that, where we're just getting these, these, these kinds of uh, opportunities. Well, the thing is as well, when you're talking about the um, coming over here and doing support opportunities, I mean, when I, when you were here last year, you played a venue called The Gulf. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm in Adelaide, by the way. Sorry, I should clear that up. So, oh, wonderful. <laughs> right. yeah. so, so, so you played a, a venue called The Gulf and you headlined that. And across the road from there is the Entertainment Centre, which is where you'll be playing with All Time Low. And as you can oh, already, cool. Yeah, so, so as you can already tell, I mean, you're going from a... Uh, a, a really a really decent sized venue to now a, an entertainment center which you know holds thousands and thousands more so I mean that's that's kind of quite appealing it's is that with all time load doing that I mean is is that part of the appeal that you can get out to well their crowd as well oh a hundred percent I mean yeah that's 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 a huge part of it I think I think really though <clears throat> with All Time Low in particular, I would imagine that we share a lot of the same fans, at least in the US we do. Mm -hmm. uh, however, they have a lot broader of an appeal given that they're, they have, you know, radio success and um, they're, they're a lot more successful and have like a wider, wider appeal than we do. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's really it is that, like you said, I mean, you're, you kind of, you're summing it up so well because like that's a perfect example i know we've played the gov so many times um love that place and i think i can't remember the last time that we played there but somebody i can't remember who it was but there was another show at that venue across the street what's what's what did you say it was called the entertainment center i think you're right um i remember that as well yes i need to get the uh, details but i think you're right <laughs> And I remember thinking like, damn, you know, God, like what would it, it take for us to play there at the time? I, I, I swear I thought, you know, like that, that being a thought of like, it would be so nice to play there. And like I said, you know, we've tradition, you know, traditionally or historically, we've never had those opportunities. I think when, even when we played, when we did support in Australia with Yellow Card, I think we played the Gov mm. um, with them. 
So, or somewhere like that. I, I, I get it all confused now. <laughs> it's been so a long. A lot of shows you played. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it, that's really it. It's like, this is an opportunity. Hopefully, you know, the hope is, is that we play to however many 2,000, 3,000 people in Adelaide. And next time that we come back, you know, hopefully, maybe maybe we won't play play that venue, but hopefully it, the show will sell out quicker or we'll have to do two nights at the Gov or, yeah. you know, that's that's the that's the thinking because I think you know that that's the the best way that you can make an impression on people is have them you know they're kind of forced to watch you play <laughs> you know during when you're support. Oh, and, and, yeah. I mean, obviously we're both music fans, and I do actually have a question about that in a moment. Um, but I mean, I'm with you. Does the amount of times I've gone and uh, uh, to go and review, say, a headline band, and then the support band blows me away is. It's astronomical, and then they become my favorite band at that point. So, um, sure, yeah. Um, and just by the way, I know you say that you, you might not have a broad appeal, but I'd have written here 125 million streams of Jeremy all over. That's quite a lot of streams, <laughs> by the way. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, that's yeah. I, I, well, see, you know, that's that. I think truthfully, I think that's that's the story of Mayday Parade is that all time, and especially like compared to to all time low, they've been able to. You know, the, like Dear Maria, I don't, I, I don't know the, the, st the stats on it, but they, they were huge back in the day. But they've been able to kind of maintain and progress into the pop world, say, and have this kind of other, other thing happening. Uh, you, you know, so, so they, they have the best of both worlds, where they can kind of appeal to the nostalgia emo thing, but then they also are very relevant pop band. Uh, for for Mayday Parade, you know we we have saw you know like our first album or third or, you know first three albums or so, maybe strike that kind of nostalgia emo chord for a lot of people, uh, and maybe there's like a, a a smaller portion of that core fan base that has kept with us and are still actively, you know, fans of what we're releasing now. Mm. Uh, but the hope the hope is that you know we can at these shows, like we supported All Time Low and both All Time Low and Yellow Card this over the summer in the US. And we're playing new songs, you know, we're playing more like a crash and got me all wrong. And the, the hope is to kind of say, you know, hey, like, remember us, like you love Jamie all over, you know, you've surely heard the name Mayday Parade. Well, this is our new stuff, you know, you know, both to serve as a reminder of our old stuff and you know, show them, show fans and people like we're still releasing music and still active. Well, that was one of my other questions. I haven't forgotten the other music question later on, but um, one of my other questions about, obviously, have you played the new songs live? You just told me that you have. So what has been the reaction to them? So far, so good. I mean, uh, definitely for More Like a Crash, it was... Um, it was a lot better than than I think we thought because you know every every time you play a new song you release something and then play it it's I, I, it doesn't matter what it is it's always like pretty difficult <laughs> it's de it's definitely very you know like no one knows it you know even I remember when we first released a well a well which is now a real, you know one of our more popular songs I remember fans I, I literally remember the first show that we played that. At, at, we played it in Richmond, Virginia, and uh, I remember like just nobody being there, and or not, not, not sorry, no, not there are people there, but they just had no idea, like no, no one singing along. It was very awkward. No one, no movement. You know, it's like you're just. It really feels like you're having to try and sell something, <laughs> convince people, like, oh, this is like, this is good. Like, move around, like, have fun. Um, but that what really wasn't the case for more like a crash and for and, and for got me all wrong. I think you know, luckily with got me all wrong, I think it's got such a um, a, a rhythm that's easy to kind of bob your head to. So I think it's easy just for people to naturally, you know, groove to it. Yeah, get get into the rhythm. Um, you did mention uh, the first three albums there. Uh, and then album number four you announced overnight you're releasing that or re-releasing that on vinyl uh, for the 10th right, anniversary yeah. is um so you can see i did some research as soon as i got out of bed this morning so, <laughs> <laughs> was, um, 
So I mean that that got released. I mean, is that going to be again coming back to that point we mentioned earlier about content? Are you guys going to go through your back catalog and release things in the vinyl format? Uh, I don't know past monsters in the closet. I would assume so. We've been, you know, now we're we're old men, and so we're <laughs> we're at that age where we have ten year we have the special anniversaries and. And yeah, I mean, I guess to answer your question, to kind of get to your point here, it's it really is that like, you know, content people, I don't know, you, you know, always always having a story, always having something that you're kind of releasing and something, you know, luckily we're always able to celebrate an anniversary or, you know, or a single release. Um, so yeah, it, it it's kind of, it's cool to feel like we have so much happening you know well you'll have 20 years coming up soon i just want to put that out there i know i know <laughs> so i'm guessing there'll be something in the works for the 20 years i'm not going to ask because you probably that's probably still <laughs> <laughs> just make you feel really old so, um, <laughs> and the, the question i was going to ask earlier about the music thing is um like your own influences i've, I've a couple of things that i've read about you personally is that you're a huge fan of British rock music and look, I'm from the UK, so oh, that's yeah. to me straight away. Um, do you, do you find that your influences from the British rock music comes into your songwriting at all? Oh yeah. I mean, for me, yeah, I, I think it comes down, it comes out and I, I used to not really think that was the case. Um, but the more recently I, I feel like it is, it's, it's a weird thing because I, I continually, um, I continually try and not, I don't know how to say this, like, I hate being boxed in and, and feel it, like for years, I was like, well, I loved, you know, I loved what I loved and I want to expand and grow and find new music that I'm continually, you know, interested in and fresh, fresh is like key kind of component for creativity. Uh, but it's funny because even more recently, I'm just still, <clears throat> no matter what, I like love Oasis and that it's just very difficult for, or, or like the Beatles or Led Zeppelin. Like it's, it's hard for me to break away from that. It's hard for me just to be like, to totally forget that. And, and more and more, I, I'm like, when I write or when I write a song or if I write something on guitar for Mayday Parade, I'm, I'm still like kind of. Like, oh, yeah, that's what Noel Gallagher would do, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? So, yeah. like, it still comes out even even whenever I, whenever I'm, it's not, like, I'm, like, subconscious, I guess, or I'm not conscious of it. Are we going to see you on stage, then, with the old Jimmy Page, uh, like, violin bow on your guitar? <laughs> You know, it's funny, whenever I first started playing guitar, I got a violin bow and tried to, like, mess around with that. Uh, uh and I never could figure out how what's it still it still makes what amazes me I guess about it is how he could spend he could eat up like five minutes or so of Led Zeppelin set time doing <laughs> doing that I, I thinking about that in terms of like how we build sets and how how weird it feels on stage to like any experimental <laughs> moment feels like it feels difficult to kind of navigate I can't imagine how. I mean, I guess it's it's easy when you're selling out Madison Square Garden three nights in a row and like you have the, a rapturous audience, but still it's, I, I couldn't imagine doing that. <laughs> well, I, uh, I've i taken up my 20 minutes with you, Alex. Thank you very much for your time. Best of luck with the single drop tomorrow or tomorrow here in Australia. And uh, oh. we'll hope, to, hope to see you guys when you're over here in November. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Alex. Take care. Thanks, Deanna.